What's up, everybody? And today we are reacting to the last part of part one. Uh, that is every 40k faction explained by Bricky. Bricky is incredible. I will leave a link down below to his original video. Make sure you go over there, like it, subscribe to him, and all that good stuff. He's close to 700,000 subscribers and he deserves more. So definitely go and subscribe to him and like his video and all that good stuff. Link down below. I'm very excited to see. I, I guess we're on to the Grey Knights next. Um. I have ordered some stuff, or I am ordering it probably as this video is going up. Um, I'm getting like a few paint packs of, um, like there's like a little paint starter pack of Space Marines. I'm going to get them, and I think I might try and paint them on stream. I'm not sure yet. Let me know in the comments what you think. I think it'd be really cool to paint it on stream so that I can get direct feedback from you guys as I'm doing it. I think that would be really, really cool. But we'll see. I don't know. I might be a little bit shy when it comes to painting because I'm not good with that stuff and end up doing it in my own time. I don't know yet. Factions I'm looking at so far that I really like. Space Wolves. I've done a little bit of research on Space Wolves. Big fan. Imperial Guard. I love the fact that they're just grunts in this overpowered world. I love that. Big fan of Imperial Guard. And I'm still a fan of the design of Tau. However, I want to know more about the lore first before I invest too much into them. So... The two main ones, Imperial Guard, Space Wolves, the one that I'm kind of leaning towards is Tau as well. Um, but we have got more factions. We've got the Necrons, we've got the Grey Knights, and, uh, blah, 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 and a few others. Um, I always forget the name of them two factions that I think are kind of cool, but I don't know whether I would play with them, and that's the um, Religious Women and the um, Electronic Program Machine Dudes. I always forget the name of them. Let me, let me get them up. Let me get them up. I'm an idiot. I want to get a list of all the names so I definitely don't forget. List of all Warhammer armies, sure. Um, I just want to make sure that I do remember them because they're really hard to remember. Adeptus Mechanicus and um, where are you? You crazy religious women. Where are you? Where are they? Adeptus Mechanicus. Um, Sisters of Battle, Adeptus Sororitas, them ones. I think they're both really cool, and they're the type of factions that I would collect and paint, but might not necessarily battle. Anyway, I think we're digressing. I'm a big fan of all of them so far, um, so it's going to be really hard to figure out exactly which ones I want to start with, but let's shut up, let's react to some more, and let's see if I get obsessed with anything else, okay? <laughs> The Grey Knights are the first army I actually collected back in 7th edition. The Grey Knights are a super secretive and much more old school look at power armored knights. Except okay. they are all psychers. All of them have that crazy space magic magician shit. For every... So my big thing is I don't really know what psychers do. Like, is it just like scaring tactics is it just like messing with the mind of the enemy and making them run away or making them go against each other is that what they do because i'm not really sure on what the what that actually is as a whole like is it is it really refined is it like just one specific thing where you can scare other enemies off the board or is it stuff where they can battle each other like you can make them all fight each other or something like that i'm not too sure um but i don't really know what it is i think these look really fucking cool though oh wait i've got a beat button i think these look really cool though i gotta i gotta beat bone so i gotta use it hundred thousand guardsmen there's one gray knight for every ten thousand sisters of battle there's one gray knight for every wow. thousand space marines there's one gray knight gray oh, knights are... are the strongest of the strong both in mental will and absolute just strength wow. these are space marines that are all high level psychers all of them able to specifically do one goal and that is kill demons the emperor believed that the demons of chaos were the number one threat to the imperium and he probably is right however this group is entirely based on doing that through a myriad of tactics so can we safely say that these are like the special forces of space marines is that what we're going with here if that's the case these are fucking cool wait sorry these are cool these are really really cool and I'm really all about this. I really, really think these are awesome. I'm going to use that blue button way too much. But yeah, these are really cool. And if they are kind of like the SF version of Space Marines, I am all about that. 
Coming from the planet, or I guess the moon, of Titan in the Sol system, the Grey Knights are thrown through extremely rigorous training and are as clear of mind and soul as they possibly can be. Since the demons of the warp are the warp and your mind projects to the warp, people can go insane very fast, especially lower level psychers. Interesting. These Grey Knights need to be able to harness the warp in the presence of demons and stay perfectly sane. One of their characters, one of my favorite characters, is named Castellan Crow. He has a demon blade, the black blade of Mahamahama, and he has to have it on him because it tempts everyone nearby, constantly beckoning them, use my power, use my strength. I tell you what, the the um, correlation between this and the Stormlight Archives, a, a book series by Brandon Sanderson, my favorite book series, it's very similar. These, these people in this giant armor that is like near undefeatable. There's a blade in the Stormlight Archives that is very reminiscent of this. And um, the reason it's my favorite book series of all time is because it's very unique in its sense that um, people can be overpowered, but lesser people can also defeat them in different ways. And I like that it's kind of similar in its own way. And these these guys are... These guys... <laughs> I really like these ones as well. Can I not just collect them all? Can I collect them all? Suck my penis, whatever the possibility. And so he has to keep it on him all the time as this thing whispers to him consistently. <clears throat> and he has to stave it off forever, being alone in his chambers or on the battlefield because anyone who gets too close to it might be tempted a little too hard. He is that pure of heart and mind and all the characters in the gray knights are basically like that that's the only amazing issue is that um gray knights have a scorched earth policy you know more ways than one if they're fighting demons demons corrupt and make people crazy so if i'm a guardsman and i'm fighting demons and the gray knights <laughs> arrive and they kill all the demons i'm a risk and so guess who's not making it out of there? On Holy the tabletop, crap. they're very strike fast, strike hard kind of people. Oh, they teleport cool. all around the place. They are fast strike groups, small amounts of models because they're so dang strong. You only have so <clears throat> many characters, but with it, you get in there, you're very tough, very tanky, you hit really hard and you try to bounce around the battlefield quickly, but you don't have numbers. And so every dead gray knight hits really damn hard. So what I know of battling or what I can remember when I was a kid is there was like this point system where um, each player can have a certain amount of points or they have a certain amount of points and you're allowed to fill them points with certain um, figures. So like a space marine, I don't know, might be like, I'm, I'm just trying to explain what I know from it, but it might be like 50 points and you're only allowed a certain, I'm like, like five points or something. You might be allowed only a certain, like you're allowed to fill it up, right? So if you have like a game that's, only 50 points and one space marines one point you can only have 50 space marines so i'm guessing these are like double that like each character might be like double that of a space marine because they're way more powerful that's kind of what i'm getting from this that the that there's less of them on the field because they're worth more points um with that being said i feel like that's like a high risk high reward right so like if you had lesser characters on the field you might also end up if you lose one of them, that's a big deal. That's a big, big deal, and it could take a huge chunk out of your army, and that's kind of worrying. Also, that dude right there holding the uh, the head, I really like the style of these guys. They're fun, though, if you like that kind of uh, fast-striking kind of army. Oh, and also, uh, Kaldor Drago is a thing. We're not even going to get into Kaldor Drago. All right, that is, uh, oh my goodness gracious. Easy. I am the hammer. I am the male about his fist. I am the spear in his hand. Though we are lost, I am the shield on his arm. I am the flight of his arrows. I am the hammer. I am the sword. I am the shield. I am a soldier at the battle at the end of time. Grey Knights are pretty hardcore. Yeah. They are as holy as you can get for a space marine. If you like space marines and you want to, you know, that they're holy enough, you want to be holier? Grey Knights. <laughs> if you want to be holier and big, let's talk Imperial Knights. Imperial Knights, okay. Do you like gigantic walkers the size of homes? Yes. Or medium-sized buildings? Yes. Do you want to kill heretics, but you want to kill like 40 of them per turn? Do you yes. want a gigantic old-school knight noble house style of walkers with giant chainsaw arms? Then you got Imperial yeah. Knights. Yep. Imperial Knights, it's not a whole lot to talk about them because they're just gigantic walkers, but they have this old school, like 
house feel to them. Like literally like there are houses. Each Imperial Knight comes from a house and each of them act in their own special way. Interesting. These behemoth of walkers also destroy almost everything in their path, killing full swaths of squads in a couple shots, stepping on legions of troops. Like, Surely you can only have like one or two of them on a field, on a, on a battle then, at any one point, because these guys look OP. These things do not mess around. Yeah. And they look so cool. Yeah, Imperial they do. Knights and Chaos Knights, actually, for that matter, don't have a whole lot to discuss. They're just super big, heavy walkers, and they look different depending on your house or Chaos God you currently believe in. Interesting. And overall, these things are just really cool if you want to murder everything in your path. They're the big, scary, big unit of Warhammer, and if you want to collect them, go to town. They make for a great painting project, too. Game up. Do they, do they have a person in them, or are they purely mechanic? That's one thing I'm not too sure about right here. We're back down to Earth. Let's talk something about a little bit, uh, a little bit different, a little more gold. If guardsmen are regular soldiers, space marines are super soldiers, gray knights are super, super soldiers, the Adeptus Custodes are super soldiers cubed. The Adeptus Custodes are the third major army I own. I, I know, three armies. I know, I, I, I got carried away, okay? But that, that's all. I only have three. They look really cool. They look like royalty. <sighs> They are our final brand of Space Marines, but these ones are super special, okay? If a Guardsman is six foot, a Space Marine is seven feet, a Custodian is eight feet. These are the giant defenders of Holy Terra, which is also Earth. Earth is Terra, Earth, Terra, themselves. These are the people <laughs> that literally guard the Emperor's throne room. Okay, so we've got Space Marines, which is like... Um, well, no, because you've got Imperial Guard, which is like... You know, the Bobby Basic Soldier. You got Space Marine, which is kind of like, you know, a little bit better trained infantry. You know, and then you've got the Grey Knights, which are like Royal Marines. You know what I mean? And then you got these dudes, which are like SBS, SAS. Right? Is that is that what I'm getting from this? Is that what I'm getting from this? That's what it seems like to me personally. These look really cool, but I'm I feel more about them Grey Knights. I think I like them Grey Knights better. The, the aesthetic of them. These look more like royalty kind of style to them. Room. Hence, custodies. These boys protect the Emperor's throne room at all times and are literally like handcrafted people. They're not humans brought up by a gene seer or something. These are all handcrafted super soldiers. That's really cool. I think from a tube. These behemoth of men are like eight feet, eight and a half feet tall and functionally immortal. They stand still spear in hand for hundreds of years without the need to sleep and barely even the need to eat watching over the throne room holy and crap. every other area of holy terra for their entire purpose in life holy and crap oh my lord are they terrifying these custodians put space marines to shame if you liked your Gold super pines. soldiers these are your super <laughs> mega soldiers one of these men can take on probably three space marines and most likely win there are many different groups of custodians as well like the solar watch or there's also one of my personal favorite the aquilin shield the aquilin shield go out to seemingly unimportant individuals and protect them because they believe that they are going to be doing something very important in their lives for instance let's say a, a regular guardsman gets the protection of this giant eight and a half foot tall golden god because that guardsman will end up becoming a general one day or something interesting of that the custodians work in mysterious ways and are almost always outnumbered but never outmatched yeah that's These really cool people are pretty horrifying both on the tabletop as well as in the lore there are very few of them however and there's actually an extremely small amount of them but that's kind of the point. There's only so many of these people that can have war gear this strong, weapons this powerful, and training this good. So yeah, the point, like the whole point system, if I'm correct by what I'm saying, is these guys must be like very few on the table, but a really high point per character. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. I might be talking absolute crap with this point system. I hope you guys can let me know in the comments down below where I'm going wrong or where I'm going right with this. Um, but... I'm hoping to get more into this, so I want to I want to know the truth. And the custodians have all three of it. For 100 years, I stood my watch amidst the somber shadows of the Sanctum Imperialis. I was still as a statue, but always ready, always attuned to dangers unseen. Days, months, years passed by in a frenzied blur beyond Damn. those walls. Yet within, little moved, 
and nothing changed. For 100 years, I did not but wait. Yet had any threat appeared, I would have struck it down in a heartbeat. For 100 years, I stood my watch. And as it ends, I can tell you this. Patience is a weapon. The custodians are these, the top dogs. Yeah, these guys the are Imperium, thick boys. And they hurt just that same way. Though I do want to discuss a little bit about the Sisters of Silence before we get out of here. Because the Sisters of Silence, I also have a few of. And they're really fun, but they don't get enough attention. These kind of bald plume <laughs> ladies are a whole group of pariahs are also known as blanks we'll be referring to them as blanks from now on blanks. so as every mind is somewhat connected to the warp these blanks are a genetic mutation that is, has it suppressed heavily because of that mind suppression normal people feel this weird like uncomfortable nature when around them when a sister of silence walks past them you feel ill you feel just uncomfortable and strange so so what's the difference between these and um is it the sisters of battle is that the ones you know which ones i'm talking about the really religious sister ones um because it seems like they're very similar in a way just kind of like how um one second let me pull up all the armies i had it up but i wasn't happy with it the list it seemed like it was like an old list of something uh God damn it, where's my list gone? My list of all the names, and I was really happy with it. I was really happy with it. The Adeptus Sororitas. Sororitas? The name? The Adeptus Sororitas. Are these Adeptus Sororitas are like Grey Knights, and then these ladies are like the Golden Royal Dudes. Is that what it's like? Is that the, the jump we've got here? I feel like that might be the jump. Because these golden boys are pretty uh, thick, aren't they? And it seems like it's the same way. Well, most of them don't actually live past childhood. Because once they are birthed, they're, well, you know, killed. Or something at a very young age. Because they just emit a horrifying aura. These ladies, however, are guardians of the throne as well for more psychic threats. See, Ooh. none of the custodians are psychers, so they have a difficult time dealing with major demons and other kinds of psychic phenomena. These sisters are extremely specialized in it, all of them taking a vow of silence as they don't speak, hence the term sisters of silence, but they communicate through hand gestures and things of that nature. But if there's a demon issue, if there's any kind of warp-based problem, the sisters are extremely adept at dealing with it thanks to their blank gene. They normally work a lot of time with the custodians because they have to deal with both kinds of threats, but they're not represented that way on the tabletop. In fact, they only have like one real model form, which is very unfortunate. I hope they'll get something new soon because I think they should really be working together as it is that way in the lore. But hope Yeah, I think that's really cool. I think they should definitely get more if that's the case, if they've only got one model, because it really, it complements the Sisters of Battle or the Adeptus Sororitas and kind of level, it's like the level up from them, but that's the vibe I'm getting. People might be absolutely destroying me in the comments, but that's the vibe I'm getting from them. Hopefully we'll get there soon. But if we're talking about blanks, let's talk assassins. My precious power ring, gone forever. <laughs> it's been a long video. We're about to round it out. We got this and one more human thing, and then we're done. The okay. Assassins, though, the, the officio assassinorum. Oh boy, these people are deadly. Yeah, they're called assassins. They should be, but oh man, these people will mess you up. So these <laughs> are from the officio assassinorum, a very special organization, and they are handpicked by the grand master of the officio assassinorum from the. Shit, what was it called? Scola Progenium. It's Do you know what, right? When I first started watching this, it seemed like Space Marines were like the best of the best. And it seems now the more I'm learning about all these different factions and the Grey Knights and even higher than that and all these different psychers and stuff, it's making me realize that the, the Space Marines are kind of basic. Basic really, aren't they? You know what I mean? Maybe I might spread my wings and not do Space Wolves and do something different like this. Especially if I'm going to go for um, Imperial Guard. I feel like I might go a bit crazy. Like go all the way to the bottom with the Imperial Guard where it just grunts and then go all the way to the top and do like Grey Knights or something. 
think that might be are these assassins basically cool. an orphan school if your parents got murdered by demons or something you get sent to this and you get trained to be whatever uh tempestus drop troop uh, an inquisitor maybe even uh maybe you get a blank gene and you get thrown into the sister's silence or sometimes you just disappear when you are taken however you go to one of four temples because the assassinorum works in a temple style of things each these temples are the vindicare caluxus Calidus and Eversore temples. Let's start with the Vindicare. I'm far away. I've been sitting here for three weeks. Cheeky snipes. Poof! The Vindicare <laughs> temple is the main sniper based temple. Oh, we got a cheeky snipes faction, guys. We got a cheeky snipes faction. Oh. I feel like every time a new faction comes on, I want them. I want them all. Gigantic sniper rifles for all these assassins. Their whole point is to be able to be in a spot and sit there, eye in scope, for weeks, waiting for their perfect target. Taking yes. Taking people out from literal miles away after extremely long time periods. The Vindicare Temple is about precise, perfect aim. There have been reports of Vindicares being able to single out particular body parts from over two, three miles away temples in the head the jugular for instance and been sitting there after weeks and when they're ready take that shot time is done packs them up the calidus temple however is a lot more about shape shifting and deviant art it's mostly a female based one or at least it seems to be and this allows a lot of body augmentation for certain individuals to be able to kind of transmorph themselves and infiltrate areas that are problems. Yeah. These assassins will end up taking missions that take them years, two, three years, to infiltrate a heretical group and slowly work their way up just to get enough time to put a bullet into the main target's head. I'm all about these assassins. I'm all about them. They look cool AF. And then escape unharmed. Or become the main target and sabotage it from within. These are all completely about deception, mind tricks, polymorphing, and everything in between. I'm all about and, it. Uh, lots of drawings. Lots of drawings. <laughs> the Eversore Temple. Ooh. Just kind of disturbing one. The Eversore Temple is about when you don't want anything to come back alive, friend or foe. You want it all dead. And Eversore is psychogenically conditioned with just psychotherapy and psychological torture to only feel violence, hatred, and anger. It does the clockwork orange <laughs> style of thing of just making you forced to watch never ending pain and misery and, and psycho conditioning, it's I guess really is the cool. term. And then they pump you full of tons of psychedelic drugs and they cryo freeze you. I wanna be one. And then they drop you <laughs> in an area where they just want to make sure everything is dead. And then you defrost full of just all this insane, mind-boggling psychotherapy and, and psychedelic drugs, and you just go to town. Sounds yeah, like a great you, time. You don't care if anyone comes back alive. You're like, all right, lost cause, send them in. Sounds Finally, like a good there's time. the most bizarre temple, the Caluxus Temple. The Caluxus assassins are- He hasn't shown any like figures of these people. I wonder what they look like on the actual game. Are feared even among the other temples. So that blank gene, the people will go to the Caluxus temple with this as well. And Ooh. this is where they can harness that to be massively anti-psyker or even just anti-regular people. They're seen with extreme fear and uh, distrust among many, many people. They're described by the Eldar by quote as being pure evil. Imagine that <laughs> uncomfortable feeling from that blank gene I mentioned. And then imagine them being taught and given equipment to amplify it by a hundred. If normally Ooh. regular people feel uncomfortable, now they are basically akin to being a siren wailing directly in your ear. And if you're a psyker, oh no. The sheer presence of a Klux assassin is enough for you to tear your skin off. You will rather gouge your eyes out and rip your nails off than even being near this person. The Kluxus Assassin is when you want psychers to literally lose their minds and they will go on their knees and ask you to gun them down because it is a suitable choice 
over being anywhere near you. The motto of that temple is, that which is unknown and unseen commands the greatest fear. Now, for the tabletop, the assassins Ooh. aren't that special. Oh, uh, yeah, they look really cool. This dude on the far left looks kind of weird. But the rest of them look really cool, and they look like they'd be a ton of fun to paint. You can call them in no matter what Imperium faction you are. Oh. And they do a lot of work for themselves, but at the same time, they're very specialized and require a lot of finesse. And they work the way you generally want them to, though. You want to cause some distortion and weird stuff, you take a Calidus. You want to just murder swaths of infantry and then blow up Eversor. You want to kill that one guy, Vindicare, and if you have a lot of Psychers, Caluxus. It's it seems like these are the type of people when you become really good at the game, this is like, I feel like this is like end game stuff where you become, you become so comfortable with your, um, with, with the game in that you can go ahead and add these little bits and bobs to your regular armies to kind of, you know, enhance them in, in fine tune them in a way, um, depending on what enemy you're against. That's, that's the way it seems. It seems like this is way beyond my expertise, um, but it's kind of like something you kind of achieve to get to so that you can use this and figure out you know really what what makes your army the best it can possibly be against a specific target and i think these are the kind of tweaks these people are the, the tweaks that you need for that it's crazy that the the the, the curve of the learning with this is like crazy like it's crazy like you go from what i learned was the imperial guard which is just your bobby baker's basic soldier trying to do his job for these absolutely mind-bending psychers that can just destroy you mentally. Um, what a cool story. What a cool game. It's nice little, like, jack-of-all-trades if you have a specific thing you want to kill. And you get to choose which, which is really fun. But now, let's talk about the last human faction. We can round this video out before we do part two. The Inquisition. Inquisition? We have a lot to talk about with them. The it's the Inquisition. Heresy. Oh, boy. Where do I even begin with the Inquisition? Take, take every secret police you can think <laughs> of. Uh, the KGB, the Gestapo, the CIA, FBI, any of these kinds of people. And then mark it up by about 10 and give them the most power in the entire Imperium. No, you know what? How about this? This, this right here, it's a, not just a quote. This is the imperial motto, the motto of the Inquisition. I apologize for my bad pronunciation. Innocentia nihil probat. Innocence proves nothing. <laughs> the most powerful organization in the Imperium, the secret police, their number one motto is innocence proves nothing. <laughs> the Inquisition goes around like the secret police or like detectives to find issues in the Imperium. And they have different Ordos depending on which one we're talking about. The Ordo Hereticus, the Ordo Xenos, uh, the Ordo Malleus, for instance, and a whole bunch of other ones. Hereticus is obvious, they deal with heretics. Xenos tries to find alien threats and Malleus is demons. They all have different specializations in what they're trying to go for as this Inquisitor. And that's what they're called, Inquisitors. Each of them, as an Inquisitor, has their own free reign to do as they wish. They may have a ship and a crew, and they go out to find problems and interrogate people a lot. Yeah, they so are these, above the law. These definitely seem like endgame um, characters. These last ones that he's been talking about, I feel like they're the stuff that I'm not really going to get into for a long time because I need, to get, I need to get the basics down. Do you know what I mean? So Imperial Guard... Maybe Space Marines. Maybe I'll push myself a little bit because I'm doing Imperial Guard and maybe do a few um, Grey Knights. I really like the Grey Knights. I think they're really cool. Um, and I think maybe eventually when I get good and I've played a few games and I start to understand the rules a bit better, you can add one or two of these into it and kind of start understanding their armies. In every department over Space Marines. Now, the Space Marines might argue against them and stuff and there might be a lot of blowback, but technically they are above them as inquisitors they are looking to investigate and figure out 
coups and cults and demonic incursions and possible Xenos issues like gene stealers or a new uh, threat coming into an area. They're about learning that stuff and actually doing detective work. And memes aside, they're pretty good at it. The Inquisition having all of this power does make them a little bit power hungry and frantic sometimes. And yes, it is still a bad thing, but most of them are pretty good <laughs> at their job. And they spend a lot of time being very diligent to make sure that all of these leads they follow are proper and correct. They're basically it feels like these would be really good characters in books. I'm guessing the books for Warhammer with these characters specifically are really interesting in my... Like, what, this is something that I would find really interesting. Like, a, kind of like, probably get, like, a detective novel. I bet they've done, like, some sort of detective novel with these characters, which would be really cool. ...space detectives with just enormous power. Yeah. And sometimes a bit of a power complex. And we haven't even talked about Exterminatus yet. Exterminatus. Who? Exterminatus is deeming a planet unfit to be saved. I deem that this planet is demon infested and taking it back will cost too many resources and is not worth it. Wow. I have now committed Exterminatus on this planet. Wow. I will now sign the death warrant of an entire Imperium planet as it is unfit to take and better to be destroyed than allow the enemy to hold it. Wow. This can mean saturation bombardment. This can mean cracking the planet's core and breaking it apart. Doesn't matter. Render this planet inhospitable to all life. Wow. Yes, the innocence proves nothing people are the only people who can choose this planet must die in its entirety. Yeah, mean you're playing people. playing the villain. <laughs> Now, it is mean a lot, but most Inquisitors <laughs> are very rare to do Exterminatus. Exterminatus is a very crazy thing. There's only so many worlds that you don't want to destroy all of them. Uh, now, naturally, with the memes aside, there are some people who are a little bit rough on this one. <clears throat> I don't get that. But most Inquisitors generally don't. There's so much insider knowledge and insider jokes that I just don't know yet. Guys, I'm ready to dive deep into Warhammer. I really am. I like to do Exterminatus a ton, but it is an option they have. And it's a crazy option when you think about it. Secret Police Inquisition are unfortunately not represented on the tabletop very much. You generally kind of put one in your army if you feel like it. You have a couple special options there and some side content. But they're not really fleshed out very well. And personally, they need a lot more stuff put in there and they, they really need a lot more effort put into them and they're not quite where i want them to be over it seems like again with these ones just like the assassins they're very much compliments to your army am i right by saying that they complement the army when you're really trying to fine tune them and um it seems like each individual one is a character in its own whereas space marines are just space marines. you can have like five space marines you don't really know the names they're just space marines whereas these pe these people probably seem like they all like each model has a specific name because they're that fine tuned. Um, but it looks like by by the, the the sound of what Bricky's saying, these and the assassins and a few of the other ones like the blanks need more to them. So that's interesting. Overall, the Inquisition makes for a lot of the best storytelling as well because it's a little bit hard to talk about a big story of a whole bunch of space marines killing something, right? It's just a big battle story. It's not as interesting. Having that intrigue and that moral dilemma that an inquisitor has makes for a lot better media that's exactly what i was saying these characters seem like they would be really good in books like some sort of detective novel book or mystery book i feel like these some like sci-fi mystery i think these characters would be better for that that's exactly what i said so yeah i must be right with that one and honestly the more people do it i think it's better because then it adds a little more humanity to the warhammer horrible horrible grim darkness and yeah. wow we just finished the humans Ooh. all right Ooh. come back for part two when we talk about chaos and xenos because we excited. got to talk about the four chaos gods and all the chaos marine legions and the tau and the necrons and the orcs yes and oh boy we got a lot i'll see you in part two all right everybody link down below to the video go and like it go and subscribe to him do all that good stuff he totally deserves it because these videos are genuinely fantastic that was amazing um i think i'm really impressed with the gray knights i think there might be something that i might switch out instead of space wolves although i am i am a big fan of space wolves um i don't know guys i don't know i'm still decisive i'm still not decided and i have not really figured out exactly who i want to collect yet i know that i really want to do some imperial guard i think that might be like my base army just to kind of 
paint and, and enjoy um, but i think for playing the actual game i don't know guys i don't know i really like them them uh gray knights i think a, a, some gray knights and some space wolves on the same table would be really fun would be really really fun let me know in the comments what you think also give me all your suggestions and lore down below in the comments i've been reading some of your comments and they're genuinely amazing like some of the stuff you guys write to help me understand this world better makes me incredibly happy so keep up the good work keep up putting them comments because i love sitting down at night and just reading through them um i should be getting my first model soon let me know in the comments if you want me to paint them on stream or whether i should just paint them and put them on instagram let me know what you think get some feedback um also let me know in the comments i said this in the last warhammer reaction let me know in the comments what video games warhammer video games you want me to play because i will play some on stream and i will play some on the channel okay guys um uh, but for now members you're incredible i love you i couldn't do this without you i honestly couldn't make videos every single day if it wasn't for these members right here so thank you for supporting the channel as much as you do i truly truly appreciate it links down below to all my socials including the two links to discord we've got the military link for all things military joining getting fit all stuff for military join that discord uh, and then we've got the geek link for all things warhammer scp D, &D halo metro star wars all that good stuff over on the geek discord also link down below to my podcast and my twitch stream where i stream mondays wednesdays and fridays which the streams have still been amazing recently so definitely go and check them out um and also link down below to my second channel original human geek where we upload stuff like DD &D and other fun stuff which again i've said this a few times i'm going to say it again i am going to be putting my own campaign on the geek channel soon i'm going to be the dungeon master on the next D, D campaign it starts in a couple of weeks so go over there subscribe get excited i've been working on it putting a lot of time into it creating my own world and i want you guys to hear it i want you guys to hear it so uh yeah i love warhammer guys you've got me hooked i might like warhammer more than scp don't ha don't at me i think scp is good from a story perspective but i think warhammer has more cohesiveness around it and uh, more interactiveness rather than scp where you just read them and enjoy it with warhammer you can read it enjoy it you can paint it you can battle it you can buy the books you can watch the shows you, there's loads of stuff you can do watch the animation should i say um so yeah i really like that aspect i really like that aspect all right guys uh until next time i love you all i hope you have a wonderful day goodbye